All right, we are live. Welcome to the RG DFS Tournament Takes Podcast, Week 18, uh, Final Season Edition. Um, here once again, my name is Chris Kirkwood, screen name Kirk Dees, here with my main man, uh, the, the head honcho over at Occupy Fantasy, Brian Jester at Court Jesters, um, or screen name Court Jesters. Um, anyways, uh, what's up, Brian? Welcome to our final edition of the pod for this year for uh, Tournament Takes for Yahoo. Absolutely, man. It's been a pleasure doing these with you all year, and uh, we get to finish it off with, uh, what, a 14-game, no, 13-game playoff-motivated, teams resting, one of the hardest slates to decipher every year. Yeah, so it is. It's also typically a, a slate with a lot of edge on it, but like a lot of that is also, it feels a little bit tougher this year in general, because you know the whole COVID thing has certainly thrown a wrench in everything, but... Um, you know, obviously we want to find players who are going to play, right, and have some motivation behind it. Um, so there's good articles. You know, I know in Establish the Run, ha- Levitan puts out a motivational article. So you, everybody's going to want to stay up on whatever motivation news that that you can. But it's also – there are teams that are playing for nothing that will end up trying to play spoiler and going all out. There's also teams that will completely lay down. There's also teams that, that were – think should rest their guys who sometimes they don't rest their guys and vice versa where we, you know, it's, so it's, it's really hard and it feels harder to me this year than normal. Cause like we've had some really good milestones that have seemed like easy. The one that sticks out to me, like there was a George Kittle one a couple of years ago and he absolutely nuked. Yep. Um, if you remember that and they just like basically left him out there until he got his, his, he had a monster game, but broke a, broke a bunch of records. But, um, some of these records seem kind of like we're, we're a little bit far fetched this season, right? Like, so the one we'll get into, but like just to JT 266 rushing yards for 2000. Do you think they're really like, are they really going to like try they're to, trying get to get in the playoffs, guy? dude? They're trying to get yeah. the playoffs. They got to win it in. They'll do whatever it takes to get in. Yeah. And then like Tom Brady has a bunch of milestones, but like, I don't think he really cares. He might care. We'll get into that one. But, um, it just a lot of these feel like we're grad. Like Kyle Pitts is an easy one. I, I get that. If he needs 59 yards for a single season rookie tight end record, um, I get that. Though the, that's easy to accomplish. But like some of these are just ridiculous. But we'll try to go through that and break it down. We'll also try to identify some players that we think are going to be motivated and have good games. And uh, I mean, I, I guess we'll uh, we'll just do it our same way. But we'll try to touch on the, the games that are that we feel are most important. Um, let's uh, pump up the housekeeping stuff. Obviously, it's week 18. This is the last. If you've actually hung with us through this season, uh, kudos to you. But um, uh, you're already probably playing on Yahoo. But if you aren't for some reason, it is the place to play, has been the place to play this season. They have done a ton of just guaranteed overlay every single week. And that doesn't stop for week 18 where they have the $1 million baller, $20 entry, $200,000 of overlay. Uh, so that is a negative 25% management fee or rake, as we like to call it. Uh, they are losing 25% of the, the million dollar prize pool. First place plays out 100K. They cannot make money on this tournament. Um, the only thing that can happen, but it it probably won't, is overlay uh, in addition to the 200K because they've been filling up quicker as these last couple of weeks. More people are finally trying to, you know, yep. everyone's playing there and it's trickling, trickling in. So Get your registrations as early as possible for that because it did uh, fill up kind of early last week. Um, they also have the single game entry contest, which I love. They have two of them going on Saturday for the the two two NFL games slate um, that we won't be talking about. But uh, get in those and uh, yeah, it's been it's been a blast. How have you enjoyed uh, playing over at Yahoo? It's been great. It's, it's a whole new challenge and it's a different change up from from FanDuel and DraftKings. And I think a lot of people who, who may struggle in FanDuel and DraftKings to get over to Yahoo where contests are smaller. There's, it's easier to, to pick through the contest to find uh, ones that aren't filled with pros or, or or experienced players. And then the overlay just completely helps your bankroll, even on weeks where you don't hit the nuts or where you your player pool aren't, isn't as optimal as it should be. You can still even profit 
just because of the overlay factor. So I encourage everyone to get over there. And I had a great time throughout the whole year playing other sports over there as well. And I think it'd be a great service to anyone who plays DFS to get some action over there. Yeah, NBA action has been increasing. And, you know, things overlay all over there all the time. Like even like in just like double ups, like high dollar right. double ups or, you know, I mean, that makes such a huge difference. Like you're getting lower rake anyway than the, the some of the, than the main sites. And then sometimes you get additional overlay that they don't intend to give you. And then also they're also pumping in contests with overlay and also have a bunch of different ones like uh, um, you play, we match. They give you like there's a $15 tournament that's only only have a, as a thousand spots as of right now, Friday afternoon left open out of the three uh 1800 entry field where they're just going to give you a $15 site credit and it costs $15 to enter it's single entry so i mean it's it's essentially free to just play um so uh yeah get over there check it out um but anyway also go to occupy fantasy they do the yahoo bankroll challenge if you aren't familiar hit me up i play yahoo all the time i'm always welcome um you know, I always discuss with people in, in uh, the Roto-Grinders Discord about that. So, um, yeah, man, play on Yahoo. But, uh, all right, let's talk about the slate. 13 games. Some are important, some are not. Um, we also have, you know, typically I like to look at the big totals. We have one total over cool. 45 points, right? <laughs> it's uh, so one. Fun. One of them. Uh, and that's the, C- uh, the Seahawks at the Cardinals. And, man – that Seahawks game just went nuts and I didn't have enough of it. And I should have, because I've been preaching Seahawks every single every week. week, dude. Every yes, week. And it was my week and I, I screwed up my, uh, I, I, it's the, the same, same story. <laughs> uh, same theme every week. I mess up my CSV. I just take too long going over like my main lineup. And then I try to rush in and I, I screw everything up. Um, He's got to wake up an hour earlier. He's got to wake up one hour earlier. I know. It's always something. It's like there's always something that, like, it makes makes it happen. But anyways, whatever. I, I think I've been, every year I've done this show, I think I've been complaining about the same things. Um, and I just never learn. It's just just who I am, a last-minute type of guy. But um, anyways, so I should have nailed that game, but I didn't have enough of it. Um, I did have – you know, I totally – made all my lineups to because I was so confident that Connor wasn't going to play that I was ready for for my big week and uh, I did not get it um, but anyways uh, I broke even so I was all right and I think you had a really good week I think you did some pretty well over on uh, DK I think it was right yeah I had some had a bunch of Jamar Chase so that certainly helped when he goes for 60 <laughs> yeah I didn't have enough of Jamar Chase um, it was unreal um anyways all right uh so like i said there's that seattle seahawks at the cardinals cardinals are six and a half point favorites 48 point total um and it the main the important thing here in that game is that arizona has a bunch to play for so cards uh should be going all out in this one because if if they win and get a rams loss they get the number two seed get two straight home games so they're going to be going all out i think and i think seattle's going to be going all out too i think that's just who Pete carroll is and they're playing for pride and they, you know, it's like there's contract negotiations that needs to go on with uh, Metcalf with uh, Russ and all of that. Or, I mean, last week it felt in that game last week, it felt like they were just being aggressive because it was, they were out of contention, right. Throwing around the goal line and, you know, playing faster. It just, to me, as someone who was sweating against the production in that game, it just felt like they were trying to score at a faster pace, passing more than they have all season. And I could see that, playing another factor here in week 18 against Arizona. Yeah. And I think they want to play spoiler. I, I just think I, I feel confident in that, that they'll be playing, playing all out there. Then um, other games that kind of stand out from the, the Thorm and pace article is on the jets bills um, from a release from a Pat's uh, a play calling standpoint. Um, bills are 16 point favorites. Bills have, you know, everything to play for too. Um, so they need a win. They should get it against the Jets, but the Jets showed up last week against Tampa Bay. So at least they're, they're looking competitive. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how that game goes. 49ers at Rams are, can't get more important than this game. The 49ers, um, Rams can, basically the Rams do play fast when they're the ones controlling the game and the 49ers play slow, um, you know, when they're in control of the game, but if they're forced to play, you know, catch up, they will uh, turn up the, turn it up 
the the gears and uh this game the the 49ers have to win um to get in the playoffs is my understanding and the rams you know need are in a must-win situation to clinch the number two seed um plus the nfc west so two seed equals two home games um they are they're going to be playing acres it sounds like a little bit you know we don't know how much but anyways this game should be fun because it's important and it's two good teams and then um another one that they had on the up and pace game which is it doesn't doesn't feel right but Steelers at Ravens because this doesn't scream high paced game to me but uh, it only has a 41 point total but the pit is the force plays at the fourth fastest pace over the last month has been playing that way they're uh, the second highest no huddle rate uh, the Ravens have been giving up a ton in the passing game and uh, and both they, teams are they, playing for something even though how unlikely it is both teams are playing to, to get in the playoffs they need some definitely help, yep they do um so you know and it's also the big ben's last game i, I mean the big they, that was just so stupid like the big the big ben tour you know i mean he's so washed at this point he, 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 <laughs> I, it, uh, it was it was awful and now we got to witness one more of this whole big ben narrative but uh i think i think the ravens are going to whoop them um we'll see but uh anyways and and we've just got you know we'll just go through the plays and, and talk about if they're in, you know, what, the, what the game means to them. Cause I'm not going to break down every single game. I did actually prepare notes for each single game, but uh, I'm not going to make our listeners suffer through that um, anyways. Okay. So let's, let's start it off at the quarterback position. It looks like from an ownership standpoint, Josh Allen is going to be the, the, the chalk I, I think at this point. And um, that's for good reason. I mean, they're a massive, massive favorite, but um, against the Jets, but, you know, they do keep their foot on the pedal. Um, They, I mean, he's coming off of, you know, a pretty good stretch here where they've, you know, he had a huge game against Tampa, um, had a decent game against Carolina, decent game against Atlanta, big game against New England. So he's kind of, you know, back in uh, our good graces here, but it's basically, um we can expect them to pass and that's what they're going to do so and they need this game and so they're going to be going all out so he looks like an easy play just gives you that rushing upside um from the main value perspective um for a little bit cheaper i mean i don't even know like we shouldn't even organize it by main value this week because it's like who are we really i mean where we are we are trying to fit in uh jonathan taylor and stuff but there's so many different ways to go we just want to build you know upside lineups right right but uh, anyway, so the value t- Ryan Tannehill maybe is 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 rating out as a nice value at twenty five dollars, um, and that's because that's a that's a must win for Tennessee to clinch uh, the number one seed. They also have um, they will still not have Derrick Henry back, but he will be back for the playoffs. And Julio Jones is off the injury report, and uh, we know uh, AJ Brown is looking good. So we've got that. The other one is Tyler Huntley. Um, against Pitt, uh that looks like a pretty decent spot at 27 dollars. you know it's easy it will we know he's going to be targeting mark andrews i don't know how easy it is to fit him these days at 30 dollars, but um certainly he looks like he'll be the target kyler murray in that game we just said is a must win he's a little bit cheaper than uh josh allen so um then there's uh i don't know what, if we're gonna looks like jimmy g is gonna be back you think I'm leaning that way. I mean, obviously, we'd love to get Trey Lance at 25 if he wasn't, so we'll have to monitor that for sure. And then and then people are talking about Carson Wentz having a big game at a 26, but I just don't see it. Um, I mean, they can do whatever you want against the Jags, but uh, obviously Jonathan Taylor, if we're going to buy into this narrative a little bit, uh, looks like the way to play that size, or at least is the preferred side for main lines. But I could see, you know, Carson Wentz, you know, doing some damage if you want to play the leverage off of them in that way in a, in a game where they should be able to do whatever the heck they want. Uh, where And then uh, and Taysom, right? Taysom looks pretty good at 32 bucks. But uh, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think Josh Allen is the clear number one here, just given the team total, and we know that they keep the foot on the gas. So I, I agree with you there. He's probably number one and the first option you should look at. The other guys I would consider for my main lineup is, is Taysom. Uh, again, 32 bucks. They they need to win and get some help to get in. They're still fighting for a playoff spot, so that certainly helps as well. And he has some rushing 
uh, rushing yards incentives in his contract. So not that he needs any incentive to keep the ball on on, uh, on option plays, but he'll uh, he, he's in play. Thirty two bucks is a little bit expensive, so I don't know if for the main lineup, but uh, and then and then Kyler, I think thirty five bucks obviously hasn't been as good lately, but in a game they need to win. Uh, if you need the five dollars in savings from Josh Allen, but where it gets interesting to me is is in tournaments because you mentioned Wentz, and I think in, in tournaments is the only place I would play him. Uh, hopefully for, get some touchdown variants there. Stafford, Huntley. Uh, and then you have guys in, in games that aren't playing for anything. But the three guys that I really like are Kirk Cousins, because Mike Zimmer is a guy that said he's going to play no matter what. And uh, Cousins is coming back off COVID. will be the starter there. You have Jared Goff, who's coming back this week. And Dan Campbell said that he's going to go. And you have a nice, easy pairing with Goff against a team in Green Bay that should be resting their starters. And it sounds like they will be resting, at least for most of the game. So you get Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown as a great GPP stack. And then I can't believe I'm the guy that mentioned it, but but Russ Wilson at 26. Yeah. Chris. I, I was leaving it there. So he's he's he. So there's other good, good options. Russ, 26, looks like an amazing value to me if they if they – play this game to win. And I think they will be. Um, then there's Tom Brady, right? Uh, yep. You know, obviously he's lost a lot of his weapons with the whole AAB debacle. Did you, did you catch that uh, interview that uh, the girl um, gave about uh-huh. her night with Antonio the night before? Yes. Yes. That's the only thing I took away from the article is that she licked the toilet seat to try to catch COVID and that immediately uh, <laughs> removed all credibility from, from my, from my viewpoint. <laughs> Yeah, a real uh, diamond in the rough, uh, <laughs> licking the toilet seat. I mean, it's crazy. Um, anyways, but yeah, you should listen to that interview to people if you haven't uh, heard it. It was just bananas. But uh, anyways, at least Mike Evans is the clear number one option. He's off the injury report this week, I think. Uh, he's been practicing in full. Um, we can feel pretty good about him. We got other cheap weapons. Brady um, has some incentives. So... Um, it's like he needs 488 passing yards to break the single season record. This is where it becomes reaching. And every year people reach here. But uh, it seems ridiculous to me. And it seems like, you know, Brady has accomplished so much to like, what does it really matter? Another record here or that. The thing that strikes it, strikes me as it, he, it could matter to him is because he is an egomaniac, Brady. And it is Peyton Manning who holds that uh, record. And so – and 48, I think it might be doable. And also Ronald Jones is out now, right? So their running game is now even less than what it was. So um, I could see this one being possi- a possibility here. I, I don't know. It does feel like reaching, but I think it's possible. So I think I want to play some Brady. But, like, one thing I can say about this slate is that it's going to be bananas, right? Things are going to inevitably happen that we never expected, right? Like some guys are going to, like, just – roll over and then uh and you might get games like you might get like good games from like a brandon allen a case keenum uh and andy dalton like the like there's just it's just crazy but uh i think you're right to amon man amon ross st brown is just ridiculous huh so i think i do like that pairing with jared, jared goff um so I'm, I'm on board with that but yeah the, the guys that i want in my lineup um, my main plays are going to be just – it's going to be – got to be someone that I think the game is completely important and meaning meaningful mo- uh, motivation standpoint. So that's Josh Allen. That's Kyler Murray. That's um, Taysom Hill. So I think for my main lineup, that, those would be the three three guys that are most likely to make it. Um, then in the, in the baller, I, I'm going to want my rush shares. I'm going to want some of these other guys. I'm going to want Brady shares. Um, and then I'm just going to – just going to go nuts and try to try to narrow my pool the best I can, but uh, include a bunch of these guys. So uh, any other plays that stand out from like, at least from like a GPP standpoint where you can say like, I'm definitely going to be a little bit over the field, like a, like maybe like a Davis mills or anybody like in. I don't, I'll, I'll, I think I'll save that leverage for other positions because as we get to here in a second, there, there are some players that come out of nowhere for week 18 or the final week, whatever it is. So I think quarterback, I'll, 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 I'm like you, I'll kind of stick to what I know and who I think is going to play and then get a little bit crazier elsewhere. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's, um, let's move it on over to wide receiver. Um, the, the 
who are the I mean, this is it doesn't seem like there is any main glaring chalk. It seems like there's good plays, but they're all going to get like decent ownership. So obviously Cooper Cup, he's he's got milestone and record. So if, let's break him down. So he needs 12 receptions to break the single season record. Um and I, he he could certainly get that, but this is like a must win game. I don't think they're really thinking about Cooper Cup's single season milestones unless this game gets out of hand but he also needs 136 yards to break the the single season record um so though 12 receptions 136 receiving yards are in play but i think basically he's just a good play anyway right <laughs> but he's 41 dollars, so that's tough and it's like we're going to talk about jonathan taylor too and we're going to probably want to get him but let me see if um yeah it's going to be tough to get both of them in a lineup um which I did have last week um, and JT let me down. But uh, so there's, there's that there's Christian Kirk, who's underpriced. All right. For a, a wide receiver, one role um, didn't quite have the game that we, I was hoping for last week, but you know, the targets are there for him 12, nine and nine in the last three games. He is the clear number one option. Seattle has been getting decimated in the, in the passing game. Um, so I can, I can get on board there. DK Metcalf is 22 bucks. Justin Jefferson gets his main man, uh, um, uh, Kirk cousins back in a game. That's kind of meaning. Do you think these, they're going to play? play? I guarantee it. This one? Yeah, I yeah. guarantee they do. Mike Zimmer is definitely the type of guy that's going to play them, play them. 100%. Yeah. And there's, a, and there's coach there. There's rumors of, uh, this could be the end for the, the his coaching regime here. So, um, yeah, I can get behind that. Also Dalvin has been quoted in the media that he's going to be going all out and he that's what his father taught him and that's what he's going to be doing to as an ode to his father always be going all out so i think the vikings have already pretty much stated that they will be going all out in this one against the bears so justin jefferson um dj moore as a bring back for tampa there's just looks like robbie anderson is going to be down now potentially i mean they're just not they just have no options yeah, it's um, rough, man. It's I mean, fifteen bucks is is too cheap, anyways, for his opportunity. Maybe finally he can score a touchdown. But if Robbie's out, it just you know funnels it even more to DJ Moore. Yeah, but it also makes it pretty easy to just take him out of the game if they want to go that True. route. Um, so that, that's always something to consider. Tyler Lockett, twenty four bucks. AJ Brown, twenty nine. Uh, where what? Who stands out for you? I mean, a lot of the guys you just mentioned, I think, are, are good plays for main lineups. Uh, other guys that I had written down were Chase Claypool with, no, with Deontay Johnson on the COVID list. So Claypool should be the number one. I guess you never know with uh, with Tomlin and Claypool's relationship. But those guys, uh, Debo in a game that they have to win, uh, it's probably just come down a little bit. So that's nice. I mean, on, on the on the value end, it's kind of rough, right? It's like DJ Moore, Antoine Wesley, maybe Devontae Parker, Julio's 14 or 13. Um Dude, I don't know, man. It's it's kind of rough at receiver. The one thing I will say is that generally in these final this the final week of the regular season, it isn't a lot of players out of nowhere at the wide receiver position that score well. Generally, it's players that we know or are they're they're the only players that come out of nowhere are guys who are still on teams that are playing for something and they're playing more due to an injury. Generally, you think if a receiver comes out of nowhere and they're they're playing backups. They're playing with a backup quarterback. They're playing on a worse team. They're playing with no motivation. They don't pass as much. So receiver is a position that's definitely more reliant on the guys that we know that have got us here through 17 weeks. So I would just keep that in mind as we're building lineups. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'll tell a funny story. My girl needled me uh, when over Antoine Wesley. She's like, you didn't I, – I was sweating Christian Kirk and Edmonds, and I was getting upset at the game. And she's like, <laughs> what about – you didn't play Wesley? I'm like, no, I didn't play okay. Wesley. She's like, she's like, why didn't you play Wesley? He's clearly, you know, it's like, just it's shut like, up. You know, like, you know, to score two touchdowns. Maybe you should yeah. play next week. <laughs> yeah, uh, unreal. Um, just need like my own, my own fiance needling me through the whole game. It, 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 that should be illegal. Um, you know who's gonna get some some action? It's gonna be Ray 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 uh, McLeod because yep. um, he's picking up steams on, on other sites. Um, I don't know uh, against Baltimore. I mean, Baltimore's past defense has been bad. I think they're going to, sh- I think they're going to whoop Pittsburgh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Honestly, but, uh, if, if Ray Ray McLeod becomes chalky ish, I mean, I would just rather pivot to James Washington. Who's going to take over Deontay's role. And won't get as many targets, obviously, but like has the, the higher touchdown equity than someone like Ray Ray McLeod. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, well, our, our boy, uh, 
let's see. Braxton Berrios, he's dinged up a little bit, huh? He's, Sounds like he's not going to go, and he's yeah. been like Jerry Rice the last couple of weeks. So, what did you? What did? How much did you? What was your t- uh, take on him last week? Did you? Were you overweight, underweight? I ended up overweight. I played a ton of him, and I actually was uh, caught by surprise at how owned he was in all the contests. So, uh, if I'd have known I accurately that he'd have been what twenty five percent plus in most contests on, on, on DK at least, then I I probably wouldn't have played as much. So I, I kind of lucked into into my leverage on him. I, I I lowered his uh I was getting a ton of him and I lowered him on Yahoo and I was I was mad at my well I was I thought it was the right thing to do. Um I mean, but of course he uh Got he smashed. Twice. and he and he was pretty low owned on Yahoo. So um mm. and you know in hindsight if I knew he was gonna be you know what he was owned, I would have cranked him up a little bit. I would have been fine right getting what I originally had, but um I thought he was a bad play to be honest. But who knows? Um, all right. So let's just go like on the high end for guys, right? So who Cooper are you like, right? Adams, we can't play this week because we he may play less than a half. Yep. Uh it, you know, if uh he even plays that much. Justin Jefferson, we can play, right? I agree. Um, what do we can't we can't feel good? Can we feel good with Jamar Chase? We can't, right? No, it sounds like they're going to run him out there to get him that team record. It's like yeah. 13 yards or something, and I think he's probably done for the day. So and then he's him. done. Yeah. Um, Debo, we can feel good a bit with. Uh, A.J. Brown, we can feel – I think A.J. Brown is an awesome play. Um, we haven't talked about him yet. Yeah, but, yeah, remember he, two two games ago he had that monster game, and now he let everybody down last week. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fine going back to him this week. Yeah, and the, they have just – they're playing for that number one seed. And, uh, you know – Against Houston looks like a, you know, I, I, do you think Houston's going to lay down? If you think they'll be somewhat competitive, they've, they've been a little bit better. I think they'll play. Yeah. Yeah. They're just playing for pride. So, um, yeah, I feel good there. Uh, Tyler Lockett's price stands out to me. Amon Ross St. Brown is just 25 bucks and he still looks like a a good value. Um, (laughs) He should be priced at 45 (laughs) with this this volume lately. I mean, 12, 12, 11, 11, 11. I mean, he, he is the entire passing game. And getting well, backfield carries. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Too cheap. Yeah. Against, against a yeah. team playing their backups. Too cheap. I didn't have enough of him either. I was upset Me about either. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, where else here? I'm, I'm grasping at straws. I think Scary Terry uh, could finally be a big game. The Giants are just so pathetic that. You know, so the thing uh, we'll, we'll get a, we'll get a, get to this in a minute, but uh, I want to tease it at least. Where do you, what do you think with Antonio Gibson? It just uh, like seems like they're going to play him. He's off the injury report, but like, I, why, why, yeah, why play this guy? Yeah, I mean, they didn't want to give him full touches basically half the season, so like, why would they want to do it now in a game where it doesn't matter? But I, I don't know. I just think that yeah, it's. I mean, it's a good matchup, obviously, but I just don't know. If, you need to play a team that's not playing for anything. And again, running back position, we'll talk about here in a second, but it is a position where we do see a little bit more guys that we're not usually playing. So I don't know, man, I, I, I'm not that into it. I guess we can start talking about running backs now. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be playing Mike Evans. I'll just tell you that now too. Cause I think Brady is going to, is going to put up some numbers in this game and Mike Evans is going to be the, the he's just going to hone in on him. I like it. Uh, um, all right. Yeah. Let's move on over to running back. This is where it gets, pretty interesting because Jonathan Taylor, if you believe into this 266 rushing yards narrative, I don't think that matters to him. I think having a good game matters to him. I think winning the game matters to him. I think he's going to be the, a workhorse, which matters, and he's going to have monster touchdown equity against the, the Jags in this game. We just saw what the Patriots did with uh, both of their running backs just went absolutely nuclear um, against the Jags. The Jags are pathetic. Um, so Jonathan Taylor is a priority for me in lineups. Um, but, uh, on the other high, so Dalvin cook, at least, it, you know, at least we can be confident that he's going to be going all out. He says it, um, he's interesting at $32, but obviously I'm prioritizing Taylor. Um, Camara is interesting. He's not getting uh, enough work, but the snaps are up. He did have 13 rushing attempts last. He did get six targets for five receptions they just all all they got to do is do screen passes to to camara and they don't do it enough easy yards i just don't get it but uh 
Um, I did like him last week. I like him again this week. This is a must win for them. As we mentioned, I love the, uh, I'm going to be betting. I didn't bet my, the play that I didn't bet the dolphins, thankfully, cause I knew, remember uh, the reverse. Oh, yeah. I told Thank, you the thanks for the Tennessee bet. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're welcome. Uh, I am hot in college football though. Now and I'm, uh, who, you got, who you got for the natty? Who do you think it's going to win? I, don't, I, don't, I think I'm on Georgia, but, uh, I'm, with you. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but man, K State was Kansas State seemed like it was the easiest bet I've ever made in my entire life. Um, I saw you tweet about it. Yeah, it was just it, I've never had a bet that like looked that easy to bet, and like so I thought like there was going to be some risk, like because this just seems too easy. We we, we nailed time, it at you know we nailed goes. it at minus six quick, and then the thing went off at minus ten by uh, by game time. Um, so, anyways. Uh, what are some who are else in the higher end? I mean, Sony Michelle's workload has just been been great, and you know he did have another 19 rushing attempts. He had 27 the week before. I mean, the he is getting the bulk. They're gonna feed Cam Akers a little bit to get him get him get him going. I think, but I think this backfield is Sony Michelle, especially for this game and this must win game. Um, so uh, I like that. Um, Rashad Penny. I mean, man. He's been going nuts. Uh, just went absolutely nuclear last week. Thirty-one fantasy points, twenty-five rushing attempts is the, the key here. Is just the the volume, um, and his price is still fine. So I could I could get on board there. Eli Mitchell on the other other end, if San Francisco controls this game at all. I mean, he's just a lock for twenty touches plus twenty plus touches. You don't get much in the target for targets, but um, he has you know does have a game with six targets on this season. Um, he did get 27 touches, 27 carries when they in week 10 when they last played. So the volume is going to be there. He certainly is pretty pretty good too as well. This is a good game. Um, so I kind of like both of those guys. I won't be playing both of those guys together. I'll make a rule with either either Sony or Mitchell. So just trying to catch game script for whichever team. But um, and then we got to talk about the Patriots guys. Uh, I think they'll rest Damian Harris some in this game regardless because only because Ramondre Stevenson is just as good as Damian Harris. Um, And so I like Ramondre Stevenson this week. I think the Pats are going to win this game. I know there's a lot of talk about how uh, Miami has their number consistently and that, and that's been the truth, but I don't, I don't put much faith into that. I think the Pats will dominate again in this one. And I think uh, Ramondre Stevenson is going to be completely unowned, low owned, and uh, so that's just a wild GPP take I have as a as a home Pat's homer. But uh, who are, who are your guys? Yeah, so the things I'm looking at this week and running backs are a little bit more volatile in week 18 or the final week of the regular season. If you look last year in week 17, the final week, and you look at some of the guys who finished with more than 12 Yahoo points, you get guys like Alexander Madison, Darwin Thompson, Jeff Wilson, Sonny Michelle, Antonio Williams, David Johnson. Brian Hill, uh, Josh Adams. So we'll, we'll see some names here that, that pop and score double-digit fantasy points. So I guess guys that fit that mold for me are maybe like Chuba Hubbard, who's $11. Uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, Ronald Jones already been ruled out for Tampa, so we should, should see Keyshawn Vaughn or Le'Veon Bell in the passing game. Uh, Joe Mixon out, Samaj P. Ryan. Uh, Deonta Foreman I like a lot in, in that matchup. Uh against Houston, a little revenge game narrative for him there. And then and then we're looking at guys back on the board, guys we normally play. Uh, Chase Evans already ruled out too. So if we get news that James Conner is indeed playing, uh, we get three down workload James Conner at 31 bucks. I think we have to like that too. Yep. Um, David Montgomery. Um, yes. I say him every week, but for sure. I mean, it's just he's just a vo- getting a ton of volume, right? It's 22 carries again last week. Wasn't very efficient, but did have two TDs, and that's because it was the Giants. But Minnesota 25th in DVOA versus the run. Um, we can certainly uh, like this matchup. I kind of like this game, except I was hoping – well, I think Fields being down helps Montgomery in this, in this case. Dal- Dalton is likely the starter. Dalton has the second worst passer rating from a clean pocket um, this season, which is not which great. Is, yeah, very not good. So hopefully, if they're smart, they'll just feed um, feed David Montgomery in this matchup. So I like him. Um, yeah, I'm trying to look for some of these other like like Samaje Pirine is going to get volume, right? Like 
because Mixon's out and Burrow's out, but like, is he going to be efficient at all? Right. That's, that's the right. big question. Like, yeah. You're, you're giving up a lot there. Um, maybe Najee Harris. Um, he's cheaper. Dev- he's cheapest, right? Was he 20, 23? Yeah. Yeah. He's 23. He's back down again. Um, and he's coming off of a, a big game. Um, so uh, 28 rushing attempts um, when it was supposed to be Ben's Ben shining in this one, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think he'll have a pretty decent game. Uh, Devin Singletary is, is certainly a bell cow now and it's a matchup against the jets. So yes, we like uh, Josh Allen, but um, Singletary is certainly in play. Um, great game last week against Atlanta uh, had a, uh, two touchdowns, which really tilted me um, because he outshined Jonathan Taylor, which really upset me. Um, I don't know, man, this, there's just like so many options (laughs) this week. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta narrow it down. So I would think maybe pick like for those of you out there listening and you're making a couple lineups, right? Just try to narrow down the guys in games that are playing for something that you really like. And then maybe one to three guys that are kind of off the board that are getting, that are getting volume that we normally wouldn't play that you can consider for, those surprise uh, running back performances. Um, and Samaj P. Ryan is going to be chalk. I mean, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of risk to that, right? Like, yeah. And he, he plays an important role. He plays third downs for them when they're in contention. So like maybe, maybe Chris Evans gets more work. Like it's, it's very possible that he doesn't get the whole workload. And if he does, he's playing with Brandon Allen. So. Yep. And uh, Antonio Gibson is going to be pretty popular too, I think, because he's projecting well. Um, but it just doesn't seem right to me, I feel you. Uh, especially with uh, Jared Patterson looking pretty good and having a really good game again last week. Um, and it just, you know, with someone who's been struggling with injuries throughout his entire career, who looks electric and someone that's going to be a future for this team going forward, it just doesn't make sense to like, just, well, not have you, especially against the giants. I mean, they should have their way anyway, because this team just does not care. And uh I said that Andy Dalton was the second worst passer rating. The first worst goes to uh, Glennon um, by a by a mile from a clean pocket. Um, and and think about this: he was ahead of Jake Fromm, who it will be starting this week. Speaks volumes. Too. Uh, yeah, Giants <laughs> are good. just pathetic. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's good strategy. Just try to try to narrow it down. Try to get in on some of these. You know pick the ones you like you want to be in the games that have where these guys have the motivation where you can feel good about the touches like i feel good about david montgomery getting a good workload um you know especially with this could be matt Nagy's uh last game um as coach so i don't i do think that he's going to get a monster workload i do feel good about jonathan taylor's workload um you know so he's a priority certainly um, so it's just all about workload, workload. I think Devin Singletary's workload is going to be solid. Sony Michelle's workload is going to be solid. Rashad Penny's workload is going to be solid. Eli Mitchell. So like, that's how I'm doing it. It's like, it's just workload, workload, workload. And then for my like fringe plays, I'll bump up like some Ramondre Stevenson and I'll probably lose, but that's like my New England Homer take, but real quick, one, uh, one final play for you. What about Zach Moss? If, if Breed is out again and they're up 20 points in the second half, does Zach Moss steal a couple of touchdowns? Maybe. I don't know. I just, it doesn't seem like that's in, in their DNA. Um, just keep throwing, <laughs> keep throwing up 30. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, I mean, that's just, just, game, that's just trying to game script, right? Like, so if yeah, you feel really. confident, then if you feel confident in that, sure. But I kind of feel like confident in Singletary. And I think, I, I do think, I think I'm hoping that the Jets put up a fight again, like they did against Tampa. Wilson's playing a little better. I'll give him credit. So we'll see how he does this week. I mean, but I, who do they even have left if Barrios is out? Like, who? Oh, what? It's, what, it's what, are, what is? He's throwing what to he's, he's throwing to uh, Keelan Cole and and those guys. So yeah, gets gets thin quick. Yeah, it's Keelan Cole and and Jeff Smith is back in our lives. I remember, and I always remember Jeff and Denzel Mims. Maybe uh, who? It's I I thought he would I thought he'd be a lot better than. Uh, I don't know if it's yeah. I, I yeah, don't I'm hoping to see he, him get a, a fresh start, and hopefully he can. Yeah, I'd like to else. see him somewhere else, because um, uh, the Jets are pathetic. All right, um, tight end. This should be fun. Um, what? Are, where are we looking at, at tight end? 
So here's the position where it gets crazy, right? So if you look at last year, week 17, top 10 finishers at tight end. We have Chris Herndon, Pharaoh Brown, Donald Parham, Devin Asiasi, Hayden Hurst. Like we, this is where we get some real names. Troy Fumagalli. I didn't even know he was even <laughs> playing last year. So like, if you're looking for a position to, sounds especially, like a bunch of, sounds like NBA players. Right, right dude. Yeah. So if you're looking for a position to punt, tight end is it. So, uh, you know, I would not be afraid to go off the board. And, and this is the position to save some salary this week. And this is the position. Uh, so Jim Sonis, who works for number fire, they, they're owned by FanDuel. He puts out a lot of great data that, that FanDuel provides. And he looked at optimal lineups over the last uh, five years for the last week of the regular season. And, the first thing is that probably 70% of players in the optimal lineup are from teams that are in contention. And again, there's some there's some sample size and, and, and base rate issues there, but it goes to show that you do want more players from games of contention. But every optimal tight end over the last five seasons has been from a team not in contention. So I, I think, Chris, just, just as a higher level uh, line of thought for this week is don't necessarily try to grab guys from teams of contention at your tight end position. Oh, that's interesting. And – I will always look to records because of what Kittle did that day. I will always, it's he like the Kobe that last, that, yeah, it, and it, it I, that just sticks in my mind. So I will be, so, so basically Mark Andrews needs 141 receiving yards for the single season record as tight end. Mm. Um, I mean, he's been uh, just a, a magnet for Huntley. Um, so it's tough to to pay for him for sure, but I'm going to want some GPP exposure to Mark Andrews for sure. So just and that's just because of the what George Kittle did that time. So we'll see. Um, Kyle Pitts, he's 18 bucks, and at least we can feel good about him getting 60 yards, right? Yep. Like uh, yep. and maybe yeah, and and maybe he uh, gets a touchdown once. A guy I like is John Bates. Um, I was just going to say his name, dude. I'm glad you pointed yeah. it out. Yeah, I, I just because uh, Ricky Seals Jones now. So like, it's you're getting like the best of both worlds. You're getting like the unowned, the the no name guy on the team, but he he also has no competition, yes. right? That's, that's what you're so, looking for. Yep. Yeah, we want no competition. Um, so there's there's no one else to go to, um, to even if they want to like, you know, just play any scrub they have. So he's gonna be out there. I feel good. They they utilize the tight end a lot. Um, it's the Giants who get decimated uh, by opposing tight ends. And the Giants are just have rolled over. They just – you can do whatever you want. Um, so uh, I'll get on board there. Um, so, okay, man, give me some more. Give me some known aimers then. Who, you, who, took me, who, who, you took my John Bates play for sure. Um, if, if we're you know, strictly talking known aimers, Mo Ali cox uh, James O'Shaughnessy, Jeff Swain, I don't know. You know, all, all that I just said about no namers uh, being being optimal. I do like a lot of guys that aren't no namers. So yeah, guys it's hard. That, it's it's hard to actually pick one. It's the problem, right? right? So, so guys, guys that are not scrubs, but are playing on teams not in contention. Guys like Tyler Conklin, uh, Mike Gesicki, uh, Gerald Everett. Uh, yeah, so those guys I think are. Uh, Friar Muth, maybe Th those are the guys I'm looking at that, you know, they're not necessarily needing to win, but they could easily get a ton of volume. Um, just got the news. Uh, the Steelers activated Deontay Johnson from the COVID list. Okay. So scratch the Claypool take. Yeah. Well, uh, he's Claypool's still in play, but uh, certainly the volume is the Deontay is the volume guy. Um, let's see. I'm trying to look here. Like if there's any like things that like, just I can give any kind of, advice on here i i have no clue for tight end so i'm gonna clank i'm just gonna crank up the randomness and hope some projections uh help me out on this one but i'm definitely gonna bump up john bates because i like the no competition aspect i'm gonna bump up kyle pitts uh because i like the the 60 yard floor i feel like that he probably brings to the table i'm gonna make sure i get some mark andrews um dawson knox could be could be in play rob and cross well, that's gronk gronk you can, I, I definitely like Gronk, right? Like if, if Mike, so basically what I was saying with Mike Evans, so like the two, we can feel good that Gronk is going to be out there and helping his man Brady. And we can also, you know, feel good about Mike Evans. So, um, and I, the 21 price point seems fine for Gronkowski. So I'll take that. And Zach Ertz is getting volume too. So he's probably going to be the chalkiest play out of all these guys. Do you have a take on Ertz? 
I mean, it's hard to argue with the volume, right? I mean, ever since D-Hop, when D-Hop's out of the lineup, Ertz is getting crazy volume. So, you know, 20 bucks is, is, is very, very, very reasonable for him. And I think, I think he probably will be one of the most popular at the position. All right, let's uh, close it out with Stacks. Um, who, who, give me one, give, you know, give me a, give me your craziest, the, the stack you like the most, and then give me the, your craziest week 18 GPP stack. Okay, the stack I like the most is probably, okay, I mean, it, this is very simple, right? But like Kyle, I mean, uh, not Kyle Allen, Jesus, Josh Allen. Josh Allen's probably one of my favorite. Uh, Stafford and Cup. But going off the board, and this is what I like for the baller and other GPPs, there's two I like in particular. One is Kirk Cousins. We, saw, we actually saw the Millie winner last year in Week 18 stack Kirk Cousins because they played another meaningless game, and Zimmer has uh, – uh, has historically played starters full snaps in this game. They've already said they're going to play starters full snaps in this game. So we get Kirk Cousins to Justin Jefferson, probably my favorite stack. And then Jared Goff back against Green Bay's backups with uh, Jerry Rice or Amon Ross St. Brown, I think is is two stacks that people won't really play, but they have potential for huge games. Yep, I'm on board there. My favorite um... – my I, I, I'm <laughs> it's going to be Russ again. Uh, surprise, surprise, Russ to lock it. I'm going to try to go out with a bang here. Can't be the last show uh, and you not pick Russ, so I, I would yeah. not expect any less. I'm also going to have Brady, and I'm going to have Brady doubles and then just play some value all around it with uh, Gronk and Mike Evans. And I kind of I kind of like the angle of Carson Wentz, you know, just screwing shit up and, uh, like, having a big game when nobody's going to be on him, really. Him to Pittman, against- you think? Yeah, it would just Pittman. I mean, who else? Who else am I going to do it with? It's got to. It's got to be Pittman. Um, yeah. So I guess that's it. That's what I got. Um, I don't know any final advice. You did. You did pretty well with uh, breaking down. I like the the guy from Fanduel's. Uh, you know the articles that he puts out. And thank you for turning me on to that guy um, too, as well. Especially for the showdown stuff. But I I think you gave the the listeners some good things to look out for on this week 18 list i mean whatever my uh, i'm all over the place got my dog and my just jumped in my lap right now uh well I, i'll close it out with this i'll say chris I, I learned a lot from you doing these shows for 18 weeks on the yahoo side and just dfs in general so i appreciate that it's been fun doing these and uh i, I think i speak for both of us when i say i appreciate everyone who's listened along the way because it's been a it's been a good time and uh you know as as this show is presented by Yahoo, I think more and more people should be playing Yahoo as, as DFS gets tougher day by day. You know, we've been doing this for 10 years now in DFS. I think as DFS gets tougher, you need to find more ways to grow your bankroll. And there's no better way than Yahoo's overlay and, and guaranteed overlay that they have. Yeah, man. And uh, thank you for coming on and doing the show. We didn't know each other at all really before. it. Um, I was very happy to meet you. I learned a lot from you. Um, I've liked your site, Occupy Fantasy. I think people should check it out. You guys do a lot of the um, max uh, multi-entry research that's uh, out there. So that's that's really, you know, people can learn a lot from you. You've been a successful player. So I also consider you a friend now. So you're a DFS friend, and I will go to you when I need advice for things. And, uh, yeah, anything, any advice you need for Yahoo, um, hit me up anytime. Um, I hope the listeners uh, had some fun this season and made some money from all this guaranteed overlay that they've been pumping in. Um, and uh, we got one more week left and then we got some, uh, some playoffs to crush too. So um, yeah, I guess just thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to you, Brian. And uh, let's, let's go out with a bang in week 18 and have some screenshots. Hell yeah. All right. This has been the RG DFS tournament takes podcast week 18 and we are out. Thanks.